Sarah Kustak with the Yes Network. Mr. Prokhorov, can you first just walk us through your thought process in making this decision? Uh, good morning. First of all, I'm happy to see you uh, here. So, you know my business approach. I try to invite the, pe the best people I can find on the market and uh, give them some amount of time to make decisions. Uh, and uh, I, I don't interfere in the day-to-day -day routine. But uh, after some amount of time, uh, I have to look at the reality and make a change if uh, things uh, are not going in the right direction. That's what we have done. It was just uh, very easy. And, of course, uh, if we look uh, for the team for the time being, it's clear that uh, we're doing not in the best way. So we uh, show, we show some flashes of potential, but uh, we're not, uh, we were not uh, consistent. Roger. Brian Lewis from the New York Post. Uh, you say, obviously, you weren't doing in the best way. Could you give us a timeline on when the decision was made and when you started reaching out, I suppose, to other people to gauge interest? In I the started job? thinking maybe one month and a half. One month and a half. Please raise your hand if you want to uh, ask a question. Thank you. We'll try to get to as many as possible. Hi, Mr. Prokhorov. Andy Vasquez with the Bergen Record. Right now, you guys don't have a general manager in place. Who is making basketball decisions in the case someone were to call you for to offer a trade? Uh, we have assistant uh, GM uh, Frank Zanin, and all the teams uh, know who to call. And... Uh, if he needs me, I will just contact in him with him every day. So, no problem. Uh, Alex Raskin, Wall Street Journal. Um, there have been reports that Billy King would be involved in the search for a new GM. How involved will he be, and is that report true? Uh, he can send me any of his idea as a friend. But for the time being, it's not uh, his job for the time being. And his position for the time being is under discussion. Mikhail, when you, when you look at the state of the franchise, oh, Mike Mazio from uh, ESPN, when you look at the state of the franchise with no picks and uh, you know, a lack of talent, what is the plan going forward to fix things? Uh, I can share you uh, what is my strategy views. Uh, I think uh, that uh, I want uh, us uh, to have a firmer, much firmer uh, bl uh, blueprint uh, what kind of players we are looking for and uh, why. Uh, in line with the uh, strategic guidelines developed with the new coach and with new GM. So I think we need uh, to have a sense of identity and the style of play. Uh, are we uh, building a team around a uh, franchise player? Uh, or we are balancing, uh, or we in balance uh, with the younger uh, athletes uh, uh, you know, without a superstar system, uh, or we are about uh, three-point shooting, uh, or defense, uh, or speed. Uh, and we, of course, we can't be anything at the same time. So it will be a very important conversation um, uh, with the future GM and the future coach. Uh, I want to stress uh, also one very important aspect, and for me it's really a great lesson. We are playing in the best market in the world. And of course there is a market which makes a great pressure, a, a, great, uh, a lot of attention, a very active press. Thank you to all of you. That's why we need a players and a coach who, who, who can resist with this pressure, who can survive. Uh, so we need not only players uh, who like, want to play for us, but they can play for us. So for me, it's a very important lesson. Uh, so also, of course, uh, we need uh, to enhance uh, our development capability. Now we have the league team and we will expand uh, our search for talented uh, people and realize it in our new strategy. Uh, that's about all in natural. Thank you very much. Bruce. Bruce Beck, WNBC TV. Would you consider one man to handle both jobs, be the general manager and coach? 
Uh, thank you for the question. My, uh, my perception uh, that uh, there is some kind of friendly contradiction between GM and the coach. I prefer to have like uh, both the general manager and the head coach. This is my like view on this. Brian. I'm Brian Mahoney from the Associated Press. Uh, obviously, when you came here, you talked about wanting to contend for a title within five years. Uh, when you look back, did some of the decisions that Billy King made, were they because he, you know, to try and do that? And if you look back, were they maybe the wrong decisions? Did you need to build slowly in the beginning rather than what you guys tried to do? Mm, I take full responsibility for the state of the team, and I think Billy King did his best. Uh, just we need uh, uh, a fresh look uh, for the new. Maybe in our pro approach, pro, uh, uh, we and we should be uh, able to take a courage uh, to turn down the opportunities uh, which uh, maybe don't fit uh, to our strategy. Maybe this is the second lesson uh, from the last six years. Howard. Howard, back with Bleacher Report. Uh, just kind of along the, those same lines, uh, you made it clear from day one when you arrived that you wanted a, a championship soon. You wanted to own New York. You wanted to, you know, uh, make Knicks fans and the Nets fans all of this. That created an atmosphere where it seemed like there was a win now, sometimes perhaps at the expense of, of future planning, draft picks traded away and so forth. Do you regret kind of setting that aggressive agenda from day one? Was that a mistake? And do you think that you need to have a more deliberate or gradual approach from here on out? Uh, frankly speaking, uh, I deserve championship now much more than six years ago. Uh, uh, and uh, I think we have been really bold and we did our best in order to reach championship. Uh, and uh, I still believe uh, with some luck uh, our results uh, might have been uh, more promising. Uh, but uh, I'll do my best uh, to make us uh, a championship team. Uh, and uh, if we compare it now and six years ago, we have uh, a state-of-the-art arena in New York. Uh, we'll uh, have uh, a fascinating training facilities, uh, in, uh, and we'll open it, I think, together in one, next, uh, next month. We'll have a D-League team, so we have... Uh, big uh, amount of money under the cap uh, next season. So we have everything the best. And I am really optimistic. And uh, now I am 100% uh, owner of the team and the arena. And I am very committed uh, to be a championship. And I am all in. Right side, Howard. Uh, Howard Magdell, USA Today. Uh, just to that end, you spoke a year ago about a willingness to listen, at least, to offers uh, to purchase the team. I'm wondering what you've learned over that year of listening and how you would characterize your willingness and your thoughts about the value and sale of the team at this point. Uh, just, uh, I, have no, uh, I have no any, uh, like, uh, ideas uh, to sell. So it's just the opposite. Uh, I use this opportunity to increase uh, uh, my shares in the arena and in the team. Uh, on one hand, because there is a NBA wish uh, to have an equal stock uh, in arena and in the club. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there were uh, requirements being faced from Forest City. And of course, it was a great opportunity for me and for my team uh, to increase shares in the team. Uh, from time to time, some people, they came to us and they gave us a bid. I think it's not bad uh, to receive bids from the market. Uh, I'm just a businessman. And uh, if anybody else uh, uh, has a desire to have a bid, he's welcome. But uh, we never have an idea just uh, to sell the team. In the middle. Simone Sandri, Gazzetta dello Sport, uh, Italy. When you, when you came in the league, people think that you would uh, help overcoming the last... Uh, Excuse me, uh, I didn't listen Sorry, to when you came into the league, people think that you were helping overcoming kind of the last taboo, which would be an international GM or an international coach. Is in the cards now, uh, in your search, that you would look into an international GM or an international coach as well? Mm, uh, you mean uh, some rumors about Andrei Vatutin? I have no plans for that. <laughs> Uh, we are just uh, on the beginning of the procedure. We'll have uh, a big list of potential candidates, uh, and I will meet personally with all of them. 
So as soon as we are ready, you will be the first to know, as usual. Right side. Uh, Mikhail. Over here. Uh, Tim Bondis from the Washington Post. Um, you've, met, you've talked about the lessons you've learned over the six years you've owned the team. Um, a, a big part of that ownership has been the presence of Dmitry Razumov. He's kind of around here a lot, involved in a lot of the decision making. Is that something that's going to remain the case going forward, or is there potential for that to change? Uh, the most important thing we need uh, to change, we need uh, maybe a new level of leadership here. I mean, uh, in the front office uh, and uh, in the coaching staff. So once again, I want to repeat that for me, maybe the biggest lesson that were in New York, and it's a little bit another animal. It's like uh, another emotional. So I live in Moscow, like here I feel like home. So we need bigger leadership. This is my. This is like uh, uh, the maybe the most important lesson does that, does that for me. Bigger leadership from from ownership, or does that mean you need people who are more? I, I mean, uh, I, I mean uh, the GM and the coach, and of course the players. Fred, uh, Fred Katz, Fox Sports. Uh, historically, it's a little bit unconventional to to make a change at GM or start a process on making a change at GM in the middle of the season, specifically. Uh, why now make the decision with Billy as opposed to, you know, waiting out till the end of the year when his contract runs up? Uh, when we face the problem that we need the new leadership, I think it's very fair to the fans, uh, to the like, to the team. As soon as we have uh, like our decision, it's better to start early than later. So now we have very good position. We have the opportunity to meet people, to discuss, to discuss strategy, uh, and uh, we are not in a rush in making any like deals. We are not in a rush of finding people. So we have time. That's very important if we think about long-term uh, strategy or medium-term strategy. So I think it's just the right decision to be absolutely fair with everybody. Mikhail, uh, Devin Carpardian from the Brooklyn game. You mentioned time, but is there a point? Uh, do you anticipate hiring a coach or GM before the end of the season, or are you looking to do that more in the offseason? Uh, we'll define the procedure, and we'll be uh, very, uh, very disciplined on this. Uh, Mikhail, Om Yamsuk, ESPN.com. I was just wondering about the, the structure of the organization right now. When you are looking for a GM and coach, who will have the biggest influence for you when you're doing this search will be Dimitri, will be Sergey, will be Brett Yormark. Who will have the biggest influence on you as far as the hiring? I think uh, we have a uh, uh, few people. We sit together. We put uh, like uh, some ideas on the list. Uh, it's not secret that a lot of people calling now uh, to our office uh, and uh, some people they express uh, their desire to work. And so we have, I think, a long list. And we put together, for us, what is important, that to this position uh, need to fit our strategy. This is very important. Uh, so it takes time. That's why uh, oh, um, really I don't want to be in a hurry. Mark. Mark Herman from Newsday. How would you describe the state of the team that you see on the floor right now? And how long will it take to get this team back on its feet where it's a playoff contender? Uh, you know, uh, we um, <clears throat> we had our play, uh, playoffs uh, three times in a row. Uh, so sometimes you face with the problem uh, for a small reset. I'm sure uh, from the next season uh, will be, uh, I hope, championship contender. Far right, Miguel. Miguel, uh, Daryl, join our picks eleven. Uh, there's been speculation that. Um, John Calipari is tops on your list. Is this someone that you will look at uh, as far as the next coach and possibly GM? And uh, uh, Coach Kale is a great coach, uh, but uh, we won't be discussing uh, today on any name uh, because it's the first day of our like uh, new approach. So why not in a hurry? Uh, we put a lot of names in the list. And as soon as we are ready, as soon as deal is fixed, you will be the first to know. Andy. Andy Vasquez with the Bergen record. Uh, 
Mr. Perkoff, whoever you hire as your next coach will be the sixth coach you've had in the four seasons in Brooklyn. How can you make sure that this person feels secure in their job? But actually, um, we let only two coaches go because uh, like uh, P.J. Carlissimo, he was an uh, acting head coach and Jason Kidd, uh, he left by himself. So like, uh, we are just optimistic, but I think that uh, for the time being, Brooklyn Nets is uh, the best franchise with the best arena, uh, with uh, in a month it will be the best training facility with the D-League, uh, with a big amount of money under the cap. I think it's a great challenge for any GM and for any head coach. Bruce. Mikhail, will you be spending more time here in the U.S., in Brooklyn? Is it important that you're less of an absentee owner and more of an owner on hand? Uh, in the current situation, for sure, I will spend much more time here uh, meeting people, uh, looking for the opportunities, discussing different uh, potential of our strategy. Steve. Uh, Steve Popper, Bergen Record. You, you mentioned some of the things you guys have built up here. Do you still feel you need, you mentioned stars or not stars, do you feel you guys still need stars to win fans, to... Like, uh, uh, as I already mentioned, it depends on the strategy. And I want to discuss it together with the general uh, manager and with the head coach. So it's a, a teamwork. Uh, we have a lot of uh, work to do right now and right here, and uh, this work will be done for sure. Right side. Uh, Mikhail, has, has, this, has this whole, or has the ownership of the team been more difficult than you expected when you came in, given the amount of success you had? owning Cheska and the kind of the, the way you came in talking about winning championships right away and having a lot of success? I think it's not difficult, it's more fascinating that I am, I am expected. Uh, really uh, there is a great competition in the league and from day one um, uh, I feel that we need to be a championship but we need maybe a little bit some luck uh, and uh, I'm sure no, I'll do the best, uh, and I'll do maximum I can do in order to reach, to reach the goal. Brian? As you mentioned, you have made the playoffs every year since you've been in Brooklyn. Uh, do you consider Billy's run here a success? You didn't win a championship and made the playoffs. Uh, how do you view the last few years? Uh, you know, just uh, our prior approach uh, helped us to reach uh, three playoffs uh, in a row, but uh, we have failed to go further. And for us, it's important to go further. That's why we need a small reset uh, for um, this year. And uh, I hope we'll be back uh, not as a playoff team, as a championship contender. This is my only goal. Mikhail, uh, you've mentioned that you've learned lessons and that this has been fascinating for you uh, in your, I think, six years now. Uh, if you could go back, what, if anything, would you do differently knowing what you know now? Uh, you know, like, uh, I don't like to analyze, uh, like, uh, mistakes in lesson in public. Uh, I'm criticized myself a lot inside of me. So, uh, some lessons uh, I've already mentioned. All others, they're deep inside of me. And uh, trust me, I tortured myself much more than you. So all your questions are very nice compared to what, from what I have inside. Okay, this will be our final question. Uh, Howard Meadow, USA Today. Uh, just to clarify, is the idea to create a strategy and find a general manager and coach to adhere to a set of principles, or are you looking to have a general manager and coach come in and pitch a set of, uh, pitch a strategy that would then be what you'd adhere to? Excuse me, I didn't catch you. Once again, please. It just is the idea that you're going to create a strategy and then look for a GM and a coach to adhere to it, or are you looking for when GMs come in to have a set of principles? No, no, no. Just uh, during our discussion with different people, we'll just speak about the strategy, about the players, what is the concept, etc. And we need to have like some kind of chemistry between head coach and GM. This is very important.